deriving the test cases so how do we find out number of test cases how to make test cases in design we might write some flow chart draw some uh, data flow diagrams write some algorithm uh, how the program is going to be actually coded so these are uh, all the inputs can be converted into a graph and that can be converted to graph graph can give you we can evaluate from graph number of test cases so this is a simple algorithm called average you add the numbers and divide by the count of the numbers and how do we actually make a graph now you may ask why we are making a graph why we are not uh, using only this code or the algorithm you will see that it is easy to find out from this graph the cyclometric complexity and this cyclometric complexity is nothing but the upper bound of number of test cases we need to generate and what will be the test cases the only underlying idea is the paths we are taking all the paths should be executed at least once so don't go into the detail of this average code i am just showing you that because we have to make a control flow graph we have to make certain nodes and edges please note all the nodes mainly are concerned with the equivalent analogous diamond of the flow chart diamond is all about conditional statement if else switch do while while for and case switch case okay these are round circles called the nodes and these nodes specifically we give for the conditional statement and then the uh, say accompanying or simple uh, say lines like addition lines or some printing lines so this this one from i equals 1 till do why i equals 1 till sum equals 0 these are still these are just just uh, declaration or initialization but we have to worry about do i so from i equals 1 to do while we can regard all this as node number 1 as i said we are just interested mainly in the conditional statement because that will be the branching and we have to test the branch now inside this do while we have two uh, different testings or checking and then we have a and operator so this this we have a compound statement so we will take first one and second one because both the condition will either be true or false so we'll make this, take the first one as two and second one as three so now we have we have got three nodes the first node for do while and others second is for this checking before and and third is for the checking after the and operator now two it after two three is coming but from two and three there will be branching because the condition can be yes or no or Uh, true or false now when it ends you have to go to the end because two and three are the simple path but if but if it is not taking that path it will go to end 10 and 10 is what after end do now coming to the fourth you want to write it you can write it make a dot node you can make it it doesn't matter because you can combine this four with three you can also combine this four with five so this four has no value in uh, this kind of scenario now coming to the next if in this if also we have two two and before and and after and now it is up to you if you want to take this if if you want to take this if also as a node you can take we are not taking if as a node but if you want you can take it so your graph and my graph may be different now i'm taking just this value greater than equal to minimum and value uh, less than equal to minimum now when if if is okay when it fails well it when where whether it is going to go it is going to go to 8 uh, and if so we pointed it to 8 now after 8 there will be a uh, 9 that is the do will do i do while will end so we are going to end do as i said every 
edge has to start and end. Now, when this is going on, going on, you, if, if the conditions are not met, you have to go again back to 2. So, from 9, you have to go back to 2. And this will go on, on because do while go on and on until the condition is false. From 8, you will go to see, this 8 to 9. From 6, where, where are we going? If the condition is true or false, we are going to 7 or 8. Okay. Either if it's true or if it's false. So that is we are going to from 6 to 8 and 7. So this is the way. One more uh, thing is from 10. If 10 is true, we go to 11. If 10 is false, we go to 12 and then we end at 30. This is the end if. Now, if you even don't understand a bit, you just have to take the conditional statement and just see and just make the edge from where it start and where it end and name those nodes as some numbers. Okay. So the basis part testing method can be applied to a procedural design or a source code or a flow chart or a data flow diagram, whichever input you have. You just see the conditional statement and the compound statement and name them as, as the nodes and join them. So this was the average simple algorithm and this has a compound conditions and loops. So we took it for the example of test case design. So what are the steps? First step we have already done. Using this design or a code as a foundation, we actually made a control flow graph and we use the symbols and construction rules. And the construction rules you can just, you know, uh, manipulate it, change it because ulti ultimate our aim is to execute all the paths ex exactly ex at least once. Okay. So 10, you can take uh, if in, in after four, if we have not taken, you can take it. So wherever it starts, take a note. Wherever, wherever it ends, you can have another note. Okay. So this is a kind of graph we made. Now we know how to find out the cyclometric complexity. Since we have the control flow graph, now we have simple formula to find out the, the cyclometric complexity. Cyclometric complexity is just the number of cases or you can say the upper bound. So VG all this we are going to find out cyclometric complexity. This can be determined without developing a flow graph. Just compute count the conditional statement in the PDL or the flow chart or the data flow diagram. How many conditional statements are there? Just count it. Just add a one to it and then that will be your number of cases. The only thing this flow graph is helping you is now you can visually see how many paths are possible, whether they, these are independent paths or not. Otherwise, you don't have to make this control flow graph. Just count the conditional statement, add a one. But since we are following a formal procedure, let us see how we can compute the cyclometric complexity, which will be actually the number of cases you have to make. How many regions are here? This is the first region. Second region. These are the closed region I'm talking about. Third region. And this is the fourth region. This is the fifth region. These are all the closed regions. One region is outside, which is the open region. So how many regions we have? We have six regions. So these are the number of test cases or these, this is the cyclometric complexity. The second way to find out is E minus N plus two number of edges minus number of nodes plus to compute all these and just add two to it. 17 minus 13 plus two is six. So again, you're getting the same thing. Six. How many predicate nodes are there? Predicate nodes are there or those nodes from where two or more arrows are coming out. One, two, three, four, five. Okay. Five predicate nodes are there. Just add a one to it and that will be six. So this is a check also. You have three formula and they will, they will check that. Okay. We have got six as the cyclometric complexity and these are the upper bound of number of test cases you have to make. And then we have to determine a basis set of linearly independent path. Why we are making basis set? You said we have computed already the cyclometric complexity because we know the cyclometric complexity or the number of test cases. What will be the test cases? You have to write those test cases. You have to execute that, that test cases. So for that, you need to know 
that which nodes or which conditional condition or conditional options you are going to take and these are nothing but the path independent path independent path is that if you have checked if x is greater than 0 now you will check if x is less than 0 you will not check if x is greater than 0 again and again if x is greater than 0 what will happen is one path if x is less than 0 is another path so this is the cyclomatic complexity we are going to find out the path because we already know that the cyclomatic complexity is 6 will make 6 path so see 1 2 then we go to 10 then we go to 11 and 30 this can be one path always the first path you choose will be unique because you don't you, you didn't have uh, any other path now you make a second path 1 2 10 go to 12 and 30 now this is again a unique path because if you see here the first path you have included 11 second path you have included 12 so these are 11 and 12 are different edges you have included and that is what we want independent path means every time you have to have a special unique edge or the condition or the branch or the control structure included let us take one more 1 2 3 10 11 30 now this again is there because we started with 1 and 2 and then went to 10 for first two path but second one we went up to 3 1 2 3 and then we go when we went to uh, 10 11 30 now we have these multiple path and these are all unique path and all these we have already explained but these are the path you can check just see that you don't go to or you don't repeat the path again and again just independent path you are unique path unique route unique branching and that is the essence of making the test cases test cases cannot be redundant test cases need to be unique and they need to find out whole class of error this ellipsis is indicating that any path through the remainder of the control structure we can accept it we can have any after two we can have any any after two as we discussed earlier just uh, compute the predicate node and just add one you will know how many test cases are there you can find out the com cyclomatic complexity also but the all idea is after finding the cyclomatic complexity you have to know the paths also because ultimately you are to, going to write those test cases Finally, we are ready for the preparing of the test cases that will force execution of each path in the basis set. Again, I am telling you, the tester, when he is going to test all the test cases, he is sure, he is sure that all the statements in the program have been executed at least once and any problem in any of the path is the test case result. So, If this is not working properly, any of the independent path, there is an error and that error has to be fixed that error after the testing and this there are some independent path there may be certain path where it cannot be uh, tested in a standalone fashion it requires some other uh, you know stub or the driver or whichever you say some component have to be made some uh, code has to be written so for that you can make it made this path as a pa part of another path for example you have six make it at five add a one to another